Thank you very much. Are you sure you're ready? I'm, I'm not. That was very slow. That was. I'm really glad uh, you all made it in uh, in order to see breakfast. Uh, that has worked out nicely for me. That's working as well. Good stuff. Uh, so, uh, my name is Phil Nash. I am a developer evangelist for Twilio. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Twilio just before I get started, as we're up on the side things there. Um, Twilio is a cloud communications platform uh, that allows you to send and receive text messages or make and receive phone calls using uh, the tools, languages, or frameworks you already do. Um, we also are about to launch a, a video product which will allow you to do WebRTC video chat uh, very easily in the browser as well, without having to mess around with all the auxiliary servers that you need in order to set up WebRTC. Talk to me all about that later, because I'm not here to talk about that today, however much I like talking about WebRTC. Uh, instead, uh, I'm here to talk about uh, push notifications. The web is getting pushy. But before I start, I want to warn you guys of something. There is going to be some live coding. Um, this means that uh, we are now pair programming all together. Uh, that doesn't mean um, that uh, you can tell me that my code is bad uh, because this is all live, but it does mean you have to shout out any obvious syntax errors so that I don't look like a fool. Um, this will also rely on the internet, but I brought my own, so uh, <laughs> I've been told that the Wi-Fi has been uh, upgraded a bit today, so uh, good luck there. There's going to be some opinions, not too many. It's early in the morning, I understand, um, but I might put out a couple of opinions. And there is going to be uh, some audience participation. So I actually want you to kind of grab your uh, internet-enabled devices, as long as they are indeed internet-enabled right now, and uh, be ready to uh, send me some uh, tweets uh, or some, uh, yes, tweets. Tweeting is what we will be doing in order to make stuff happen. There are no cat gifts. <laughs> not enough time for cat gifts because I have to write the code for this, OK? Um, so. The web is getting pushy. Let's, uh, let's get started. Um, I, uh, this, this is all very new stuff, so I'm very excited about it. And as, uh, as Carolina said at the start, uh, I, I just cannot get over how quick the web platform is moving for us uh, right now. Uh, and so uh, that's why I wanted to talk about this, because I feel as though um, we are in a, a long, almost never-ending battle uh, since Apple decided that web apps were not the way forward. We are in this battle of web versus native. Uh, and I always, I always like to say, you know, there is no need uh, to um, create a native application if the web can do it. And there are so many things the web can do right now. Uh, geolocation is one. We've got that sorted, right? We have the accelerometer. That, that works uh, very nicely as well. We can get all the events for that kind of thing. Peer-to-peer -peer video chat. As I said, this is in the browsers today. Uh, in over 50% of used browsers, you can do a peer-to-peer a, a -peer video chat. Um, performance. You know, that's fine. We have React Canvas. Um, <laughs> that, that is one of my first opinions. That's a terrible thing. Let's never, ever make React Canvas again. Um, talk to me about that after a couple of beers this evening, and we will have a long discussion. Um, but push notifications. Push notifications have been a thing that the web platform has been missing. Uh, as I said earlier, I, I work for Twilio. So for a long time, we probably would have suggested that maybe you try SMS instead. But we know uh, that, that genuinely that is not as, as immersive or deep as something uh, like a push notification like that. Um, that is, of course, a terrible push notification. <laughs> Nobody cares that your friends that you may or may not follow on Twitter are talking about Grey's Anatomy. <sighs> Come on, Twitter. So, uh, notifications. I think the web, you know, we have grown up trying to do some sort of notification. So I want to kind of take you through a bit of a history of that. Uh, using a live demo, as I said. So we are going to come out of full screen. And remind me not to go back into full screen, because some things won't show up if I do. Uh, and what we have here, it's running, right? It's running, cool. Uh, what we have here is a search on Twitter for the hashtag JSConfPush. Nobody has uh, sent a, hash a tweet with the hashtag JSConfPush yet. But if I were to do that right now, that's been sent, and nothing happens because there is nothing on there. I can refresh, and still nothing there because the Twitter API is kind of slow. Good, I didn't actually send the right thing. <laughs> X 
Excellent. That's exactly what I wanted to see happen. JS come push. Um, so, no worries. Let's just think about it. This is the application behind it all. Can you read that? That is fairly large, right? Good. It's an exp express application. We have a Twitter uh, library getting a search for the tweets for the hashtag. The hashtag is JSConf push. Um, what I probably did. There we go. So we've got some stuff. It worked. <laughs> it's just a little slow. And not broken, whoever that was. Thank you, though. Um, so we have some stuff, but it's not doing anything interesting yet. So right here, I have uh, a streaming endpoint. This is sending out. Um, this will send out an event stream uh, in order to consume that on the front end. Uh, and here is my front end application, very little at the moment. So what we're going to do is, um, so this is kind of the basic thing that we could have done. Uh, let's have a new event source from that endpoint, which is stream. And we also have that list. Uh, and I'm using jQuery because I am lazy. And you don't want to see me build uh, DOM elements live here today. We're just going to write things out. So um, this could be anything, really. This could be anything back from, I mean, the original notifications was just refreshing the page, as we just saw. But this could be anything back from uh, any kind of polling, uh, long polling, AJAX, uh, web sockets, or, or this, indeed. And, um, uh, this is an event uh, stream just in order to get notifications into our browser, okay? So we get an event, um, false because it's had event listener. Uh, and with that event, uh, we're going to get some data. So I've got the message, and we're just going to json.parse uh, event.data. That gives us a message, and then I can just build up. Uh, and so, the, uh, apologies for the vars. I know we've seen a lot of lets and consts in the last couple of days. I will be using some lovely ES6 stuff, like right here. Uh, this is a template string. Um, uh, but I, I, I haven't got into lets and vars just yet, so we'll ignore that for now. Uh, so this is just my message. Uh, and if you haven't seen template strings, they stop you having to do all that horrible plus uh, stuff, because you can just embed uh, strings within the thing. So message from. Uh, end that p, end that, uh, start a new one. We're just writing out simply a, uh, uh, an li that's going to show us the message. Uh, and then I got message dot body. Uh, end the p, end the li. No one shouted any obvious mistakes yet, so we're just going to take the list and prepend the li. Okay, cool. So if that works, we're going to refresh this page. And if you send another tweet, or if anybody sends a tweet with JSConf, with JSConf push, we will start to see little notifications come up on screen, not the most exciting ones. Santa, uh, missing cat gif. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Better be a cat gif. There we go. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Uh, is anybody sending anything? We should be getting streams of messages through right now. Uh, let's, let me send one just myself. Effectively, what would be happening is a little yellow notification flashes up with a thing in the top, and it's all good. Uh, it's apparently not happening. Uh, do we have any errors? That's always a good thing to check, right? Normally, I use Firefox and F12 would work. So there we go. We missed the favicon. That's not an error. OK. Hmm. Happy 20th birthday JavaScript. Absolutely. Good. Um, so we'll ignore that for a sec. Uh, we have all this. We have other things. But uh, what I want to get back to in that case is just talking about uh, what else is happening. Uh, we've had uh, that kind of awkward, uh, doesn't even work when I try and do it live uh, kind of notification. Um, and if, but that doesn't, really, that doesn't really help us. That doesn't really notify. We, we can try and make that look as native or as, um, uh, as kind of exciting as possible. But it all lives within the web page. It all lives on that page that we've created there. Um, however, that's exactly what it should have looked like. See, I was ready for this. Little yellow thing. Um, flashing it at the top. Not really a thing. That was me uh, recording these last night whilst you started the party. Um, 
So anyway, uh, real notifications do exist in browsers, though, and you might have seen them. Uh, and they have some support uh, in some browsers. Um, as you can see, Internet Explorer is always fun. Uh, Chrome uh, has supported real notifications in the browser since version 22, as has Firefox, uh, Opera since 25, and Safari since version 6, as long as you're on OS 10.8. Internet Explorer is thinking about it. <laughs> Which uh, I will come back to later and I think is better than some things, but Internet Explorer is thinking about it, okay? So we can, you know, this is, this is all a progressive enhancement. So. Um, Let's have a look at what I mean in that case. Um, so what we're going to do is just, uh, I'm going to open up a button here, which is going to give me some uh, things to ask about. There's, there's our thing. And uh, with our button, I'm going to grab that button, and we can, when you click for it, we can ask for permission. Um, and this is important, I think. When you start to reach into deeper kind of uh, browser to operating system kind of level things, uh, permissions become very important. And so uh, notification uh, is the object, and we can request permission. Now, that does take a callback. Uh, I need to probably. Uh, that, that takes a callback, but we don't need that right now because I am just going to accept. Um, the weird thing about the callback is, there you go, I already allowed it. Let's try that once more. So we get, the, uh, we get a notification, and it gets to ask whether we allow this site here today to give us uh, notifications. And we can say allow. And in the callback, that will say, um, uh, that won't give us a true or false, a boolean or anything. It will give us uh, a string saying granted. Somewhat annoying, but you know. Um, so we're going to do that. We've given ourselves permission. That's all I needed to do then. I'm going to just remove that for now. In fact, let's oops, cancel. Let's, let's hide that. Uh, and instead, what we're going to do in here uh, when, uh, when we receive a message, which may or may not be working, let's try and find out where my problem is. Um, when we receive a message, uh, if we have uh, the notification permission, and if it's granted, uh, it's awkward that you have to check against a string. I like triple equals, it's fine. Um, it's awkward that you have to check against a string. It could be anything else. But this is if we have the permission, then we can create a new notification object. And that takes two arguments. The title, uh, which again, we're going to do our from uh, message dot from. Uh, and it takes a second argument where you can give a bunch of things, uh, but the, um, uh, the main is uh, body, uh, which is going to say message, uh, message dot body. Uh, you can give that a URL and other things like that, but we're just going to keep it simple for right now. And if that all works, that's a big croc. I don't, there's no crocodiles involved whatsoever. Um, that is possibly working. Uh, we're not seeing any events in there. So that's rather sad. That is how you write it. And what happens is um, you click that, we get our now, and then eventually a notification comes through, and we see a notification at the top. Uh, oh, we have one. They are working. How about that? It's a real life notification. And I've broken something within the actual putting them into the page, but the notifications are working, so there we go. I'm going to make that stop now. Um, <laughs> it's just going to keep going. Um, so that works. And, and with just like uh, you know, a quick request of permissions, find out what's going on, we can send an actual real notification, and those work, as I said, in Chrome and Firefox and uh, Opera. <laughs> Good. Let's, uh, let's pop back in here and let me tell you about the... 
I'm just going to leave those there, because it only goes up to a maximum of three in Chrome. You can't put any more on screen until I cancel them. So push notifications. We've, we've seen these before. Like I said, Chrome 22, that's years ago, right? We're on Chrome 42 now. Um, and for anybody who was wondering about whether numbers matter in semantic versioning, has the browsers moving once a quarter really bothered us? I don't think so. The service worker is our future. This is what we are talking about. Now, service workers. Um, are a piece of JavaScript that can live inside a browser registered by a website in order to, uh, well, actually, they came because uh, of the terrible ways that the application cache uh, treated us. And if you know Jake Archibald, or have seen that talk or read the articles that he's written on the application cache, or even tried to implement the app cache to, to create an offline capable website before, then you will know the pain. And the service worker was created in order to make that pain go away somewhat, give us a lot more control over uh, offline capabilities of web browsers uh, and, and, and sites. But what happened is we were lucky enough that we now have a piece of JavaScript that runs in the background within the, within the web, within the browser, uh, that can react to other events. Uh, and so this has brought around the herald of actual real push notifications as well. So it's not just for offline, it is for um, bringing things back into focus, that, that code can live there and wait for events of any sort and, and create a, an actual real notification. Service worker support is coming in browsers. We have it in, since Chrome 40. Um, it's behind a flag in Firefox right now. It's in Opera 24. Um, Safari. I, uh, I... And this is why I think under consideration is more important. Who knows what Safari is thinking? If anybody is out there from Apple, or out on the live stream, or whatever, or knows somebody at Apple, please ask them to be a little more open with what we're doing here, because um, it's very hard to guess what's actually going on. Um, so this is service worker support. Um, support for push notifications within service workers actually started in Chrome 42, uh, which is the most recent uh, Chrome. So that's what I'm running right now. Um, it is uh, behind a flag in Firefox and does, I haven't tried it yet, but it, 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 it's, it's there, it's waiting to emerge. Uh, I actually cannot find any documentation on Opera and whether they are supporting this just yet. Uh, and I, I have some theories as to why. Um, Apple actually has a non-standard uh, way of doing push notifications into Safari. Um, and this is all based around the same stuff they do for iOS notifications. And this is why the notification object only works within OS 10.8 uh, and beyond, because that is when notification center appeared, and that is where we can get notifications into it. However, in order to set up uh, notifications into Safari, you need, to, um, uh, you need to go through all the hassle that any iOS developer does with certificates and logging into the Apple thing, and all sorts of horrible stuff. Uh, if you really, really want push notifications and you want to support all these browsers uh, and you're happy to go off standard, then Safari does have it. Um, and finally, Internet Explorer is under consideration, as you can imagine. Uh, you know, they're doing good stuff. Let's, uh, I cannot wait to see the first um, real uh, live version of Edge when it comes out, in fact. I should stop calling it Internet Explorer. So let's write this. Let's see what happens here. And let's get rid of all of these. It's not going to work. Oops. OK, cool. So if we go back over here, I don't know why that doesn't work. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to get a service worker. Promise. Uh, so there's more uh, stuff here that uh, is, of course, new. Um, so we've got navigator.serviceworker. And we're going to register a service worker. I'm going to register mine at serviceworker.js. You can pass more options to that, including a scope for service workers, so where they can work within your uh, website. But this is a very vanilla one, and they say we're not doing anything with caching today, so uh, this is uh, all we're going to do. So we're going to register that service worker. And then, down here, in when we click the button, uh, that service worker promise I'm going to allow to resolve, uh, well, not to resolve, I'm going to then it. And with that, in there, we get a registration. That is our service worker registration. And with that service worker registration, uh, we can get a push manager. And that push manager we want to subscribe to. And again, that will return us a promise. 
which, when it works, we'll get a subscription. Uh, okay, uh, and with that subscription, uh, we actually want to, uh, so this is, this is fairly simple. Um, I have a, an endpoint uh, down here, uh, which is just a get with, uh, to the sub, and it's gonna take the sub ID out of it and save that to a global variable. This is not a pretty uh, application, but it does, uh, the, uh, the, it has the right idea. So we're going to, um, with our subscription, we're just gonna use the fetch API. Isn't fetch lovely? Um, and we're gonna go off to sub, and the sub ID is, uh, the subscription.subscription ID. Cool. Fetch returns a promise as well, but I'm fairly sure that's going to work. Uh, as long as I close the string. Uh, that all works. And so if we go back in here, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to show you. This was our, this was our Twitter client that, was that is streaming things into the browser. Uh, it is streaming things into that, sorry, that event stream that we had, but also, and I'm not going to type this bit out because it's a bit dull. Um, oops. Um, this is a, a bit of code to use Google Cloud Messaging. Uh, Google Cloud Messaging is the uh, thing that powers uh, Android notifications, uh, so it's fairly well battle-tested and has a few, um, has libraries in most languages for you already, so this is using uh, a node GC GCM library, which creates a message, fills it with data, uh, and I'll tell you why that's pointless later, uh, and then sends it off uh, using our registration ID that we saved, uh, that we're saving from that sub uh, endpoint. So once we've got that, I'm actually going to stop these notifications coming through because we don't need them anymore, uh, not least because you're sending me so many of them. And um, this is our service worker. Um, now, within the service worker, we then have to listen for some events. Um, as we said at the start, I also do Ruby, so I like the self keyword. Um, uh, but the self refers to the service worker itself, and at least it's not this. Uh, so what we can listen to is... Oops, we can listen to push, and we'll get an event. And with that, we can uh, do some stuff. Now, the problem with, uh, so as I showed you, um, back over here, I'm sending some data, uh, which should be the uh, tweet handle and the text. But right now, in the current version of push notifications, that data does not get sent back to us. That is coming, but it does not get sent back to us. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is Event.wait until. Uh, wait until makes the service worker, uh, uh, allows you to do some more promise based actions and will not close the service worker down until it's done with. And this is useful because, uh, again, another security thing with this is when you ask to send notifications via this, you need to actually send notifications. Otherwise, the browser will make one for you. And who knows what it says. Um, so you wait until this bit uh, finishes. And that's what happens. So I have an endpoint called latest on my server, which is going to go to the Twitter API and get the latest tweet and send it back to me. Uh, so fetch uh, latest, and when I get that back, um, oops, that's a function, obviously, with some data. Uh, that data I'm going to parse the JSON out of, which is another nice little function-based thing, uh, sorry, promise-based thing. Uh, and that's going to have my uh, message. And then finally, we're allowed to uh, take our registration uh, and we can call show notification. Show notification is effectively the same API as the uh, notification object in which we send in a title. We've seen this before. Uh, Message.from and we send in an object which will put the rest of the uh, text in. Message. Oops. Message.body. Uh, cool. So that will uh, eventually resolve our promise. Uh, that's all done, and we'll show a notification. I'm going to do one more thing before I actually reload this with my, uh, with my thing. And we're going to listen for the notification uh, click event. And with that, uh, we then, because we can actually close our uh, browser window at this point, we can close out of a website. Uh, with this, it allows us to bring us back in to, uh, the, uh, uh, to the site that we're getting the notifications from. So simply, for now, I'm going to open the window into uh, 
Oops. Again, we should wait. Wait until this happens. Cool. So that is uh, my service worker. Uh, that's all running. So let's go back to the browser. There they all are. Let's come out of full screen, because that's not what we want. Refresh that. We're going to get the notifications, which would uh, bring up the um, permissions if we hadn't already allowed real, uh, other notifications. And that has sent uh, my subscription ID, which is a big, long, random string, as you can see at the bottom, down there. That means uh, I'm ready to close that. That is the uh, service worker internals page uh, that allows you to check on what running service workers are doing. And so we don't have our, uh, we don't have the website open. We do not have our notification site thing open. So if you start sending um, uh, tweets once more, we will eventually start to see uh, things coming back through. Um, I will start to wrap up uh, a little bit, uh, just waiting for those. But what we should see is them start to come through. Please, somebody send a tweet. Um, and I want to finish with a couple of uh, uh, a couple of things about it. Um, I just want to say, like, notifications are annoying. Um, they can be if you do them wrong. Uh, there are some guidelines that are being set out about how to do notifications right, and, and I, I recommend that before uh, you decide to um, start uh, any of this, read what the best way to deal with this is. Allow people to opt in and out of all the notifications you can. Please do not send annoying notifications like the Twitter application does, because seriously, nobody cares about Grey's Anatomy. Uh, and we didn't get any through, so let me just pop, oops. I'll just pop back to that. What we should be able to do is close the thing, and notifications would, in fact, pop in at the side. When you go and click that notification, it will reopen the browser back to the site you were on. Cool. So that is kind of all I want to say. I have one tiny little announcement um, that next week, if you happen to be in San Francisco, it's possible. Uh, or if you want to go, or if you have somebody who's willing to fly you out there right now, uh, Twilio are holding a conference called Signal. It is about modern communications, and it's about um, talking to your customers, talking to users, and communicating with them as best you can in all the ways we know how to do on the web. Uh, if you use the promo code NASH20, you get 20% off a ticket. Uh, and that is all I want to say about that. So uh, thank you very much for bearing with me, uh, for sending tweets. Uh, that is push notifications and how we can make the web a little bit more interesting, a little bit more native. Uh, thank you very much. And now couch time. Couch Been looking time. forward to this since the start. We're just <laughs> going to have a nap because there are no questions. OK, so before uh, you think about Everyone thinks about questions because I haven't seen anything on Twitter. Reminder, use Twitter to ask questions, speaking of which. And please be very mindful of Wi-Fi because it's working pretty well right now. So do not download your cat movies and stuff, please. So we can all actually like use Twitter to ask questions and whatnot and just share everything with the hashtag, which you did a great job of yesterday. So speaking of questions, anyone? I mean, that was pretty cool, so I expect some questions. Can't see any hands. Oh, there's yes, one over there here, one the and there's one over there. Please don't fight over it. Hi, thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, do you know anything about the mobile support, or how does these workers affect, for example, do, to the device's battery life? Ooh, I have no idea about battery life. I can tell you that right now. Um, mobile support. Uh, this um, service worker with push notification is supported in Chrome 42. That is both browser and Android. Um, so anybody using yeah the Chrome and Android can use this right now. So that's where we can start to get these um, notifications. Safari, even with its non-standard notification uh, uh, way, uh, doesn't support that on iOS yet. Again. I hope to hear that they are interested in service workers and going to replace the whole thing. Oh, one more thing I meant to say, actually. I was using Google Cloud Messaging uh, there to send the notifications through. Um, but apparently, I've been told that Google and Mozilla are, in fact, working together on a standard called Web Push, which will allow not Google to have to, you know, you don't have to push it through Google or Mozilla's servers or something like that. There will be a standard for this, hopefully. So uh, yes, yeah, sorry, don't know about battery life, Chrome 42. Is it?
from like what I recall, um, Jake Archibald has a website for like updates for service workers. Yeah, that's is service so, worker like, ready yet? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So if you want any information about that, go to that website or ping Jake because he's amazing, and I hope he's watching. Absolutely. Next question. No question. Ah. <laughs> More no? questions? No. That was a fake question. That's not cool. Don't do that. Uh, someone upstairs, there is a question over there, or are you just like stretching because I can't tell? Questions? Uh. Uh, does Twilio have plans to support uh, this kind of technology anytime soon? You're interested in things. Uh, if you're interested in that uh, kind of thing, I would probably try and pay attention to uh, the proceedings at Signal, uh, <laughs> where uh, where any kind of official announcements may or may not be made. Uh, but I have nothing I can uh, tell you on that right now. Which basically means there will be something, but I can't tell you right now. Just go to the conference. <laughs> any more questions? We have we maybe like time for two more. Upstairs, wake up. They're so, they were like sleeping all day yesterday. I don't know what's up. I mean, we can throw the mic or you can shout it at us. One of the security implications of uh, cloud computing services. Because uh, so there's a lot of work and a lot of thought being put into this. And this is why we are uh, hi hiding as many things as we can behind uh, the permissions and things like that. Uh, in terms of uh, security, uh, it, it's as secure as any other uh, JavaScript that you can and write in effect to happen on the page. Um, service Worker itself is somewhat sandboxed, um, uh, and can affect things back onto the host page via uh, kind of post messages, um, but I, I, I don't know in depth about actual um, security implications of it, but. Um, uh, they are thinking very hard about it as they come up with this stuff so that we can't cause trouble. <laughs> okay, there's, there's a question on Twitter, and that would be the last question. Um, is the recommended interval for push notifications? No. Recommended interval for push notifications. Uh, that's, a, that's a great point brought up, I suppose, by the uh, barrage of notifications that I was getting on screen at one point. Um, uh, as, as you could see, uh, Chrome was limiting uh, to kind of three on the page at any one time. Uh, if you are going to, I would um, very much kind of play that by ear. I don't think there is a recommendation. It depends on what you're trying to notify. Like if everything is super important, if everything is super important, somebody needs to see everything, then you've got to send everything, right? But if, if it is just kind of, um, uh, you know, emails coming in or something like that, like. Yeah, and, and somebody gets three in a row, probably back off a bit or say, make the notification say there's three uh, emails coming in. I think it really does depend on your use case in that particular case. Okay, I think we're out of time, sadly, but I think everyone is awake now. I, I, I'm definitely awake, although we need more cat gifts. I think, I think next speakers should actually just like change their slides and just include cat gifts. Or people Hopefully. send them in, it's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you, Phil. That was amazing. Thank you very much.